Hi, I'm listing some of the common mistakes that could happen when students are working on calculus. Um, so in this example, we want to take the derivative of cosine of 5x squared minus 6x. The students get confused and they think that this is just cosine of x times 5x squared minus 6x and they start using product rule instead of chain rule, which is wrong. That's one of the common mistakes that also happen in regular pre-cal. I give them tangent of x equal to 1 and I say, um, how do you get the x by itself? They start dividing both sides on by tangent. I tell them this is tangent of x, it's a function, and it's not tangent times x, so you cannot divide by tangent. Another common mistake is this. We have a composite function. They know that this is a composite function and they need to use the chain rule, but they cannot identify which one is the inside, which one is the outside function. So that's why we have a lesson in regular PCAL that we give them a composite function and we ask them to find the component. So they need to find the inside and outside function. That helps them get ready for test level. On the next example, they know this is a composite function and they need to use the chain rule, but sometimes they forget that they need to take the derivative of the outside one first. So I give them this um, M&M tablet and I ask them to put in their mouth and melt it and ask them, which part do you taste first? Of course, they taste the outside one first and then the inside one. I tell them that's the same. Um, you need to take a derivative of the outside one first, and then you're going to taste the inside. Then you take the derivative of the inside. On this example, we have uh, the product between two functions. They know that they need to use the product rule, but they just simply don't use the product rule correctly. So they just take the derivative of the first one times the derivative of the second one which is wrong. So they need to be reminded about the correct way of using the product rule. Confusing the meaning of derivatives in real world is the other example. Um, so in this one, this example, the height of a ball is given using this formula and they need to find the velocity after three seconds. So they just simply plug in three into this equation. They need to know that the velocity is basically the derivative. So they need to find derivatives and then plug in three. Or here's the other example. Annual interest is given using this formula. And they're asked at what rate is the investment increasing? They plug in four into this equation instead of taking the derivative first because they don't know that the rate of change is basically derivative. So here's the other example that could happen when they're in trying to take the integral, the, the, taking the in, improper integral. So we want to find the integral from negative infinity to infinity of x. So they just simply write, okay, this is limit from negative t to t uh, when t goes to infinity. And they go to the next level and plug in t and negative t here, and they end up canceling these two. And they're like, okay, this is equal to zero which is wrong. So they need to know that if we graph that function, basically we have two different parts. On one of them, the parameter is going to negative infinity. On the other one, it's going to positive infinity. So there are two different parts, and we need to take the integrals into separate parts as well. So one from negative infinity to zero, the other one from zero to infinity. And it's better if they use different parameters, like P and S, so they know that they're not the same and they don't end up canceling those terms. So in this case, they go to the next step here. This part is going to be equal to negative infinity, basically, and the other one is positive infinity, and that's actually divergent. And here's another example, improper integral. Um, so we want to take an integral from negative 2 to 2 of 1 over x. So they are like, okay, this is ln of absolute value of x from negative 2 to 2, and the next step is this, and then we end up canceling these two terms, and that's equal to 0. So that's, again, wrong. 
and they need to know that first of all, this function, if we graph it, it's not even defined on zero. So we cannot just simply pick integral from negative two to two. So we have to know that these are two different parts. So we have two separate integrals here from negative two to zero and then zero to two. Okay, we start going to the next step. Um, this is the next step, and here that's equal to limit of ln of absolute value of t from negative 2 to t when t goes to 0 from the left side, and the other one, the same when uh, t goes to 0 from the positive side. Again, they forget to use different um, parameters, so they end up canceling ln of t on these two both sides, and then um, they have negative ln of absolute value of 2 and positive ln of absolute value of 2, then they also cancel and they end up 0. That's again wrong. So they need to use two different um, parameters like p and s. And here's the other mistake that could happen. So they find the limit of this one, or maybe I can say this part, that's going to negative infinity. The limit of the other part is going to positive infinity. And they think, okay, so if one is negative infinity, the other one is positive infinity, they cancel each other, which is wrong. They need to know that if um, this integral ends up to negative infinity or positive infinity, then the area under the curve doesn't make sense at all. So uh, basically, that's just divergent. We cannot say positive infinity and negative infinity cancel each other and they're equal to zero. They're not equal to zero because it's not defined and it's divergent. So that was some of the common mistakes that could happen in um, calculus for students. Thank you.